Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob and in this video we are going to be going over how templating works very basically um, in Hugo themes. Now this is actually a really, really interesting topic, but there's so much that you can do with it. I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, we are not even going to come close to scratching the surface of all of the things that you can do with Hugo themes because it is it's amazing the, the the things you can do with it. You can do so much. So you can follow along this, with this video. All you have to do is create a Hugo site. I have um, other videos covering how you do that. Um, create a Hugo site. I added a couple posts here. Test and welcome. So those are our posts. Absolutely useless. Um, and then when you're in the root of your Hugo project, just say Hugo new theme and then type the name of your theme and that will create the folder structure that folder and file structure that you need um, under your themes directory. Okay, so then come into your config.toml file, set your theme equal to custom theme and you should be ready to go. All right, so I'm going to go through these files in kind of like sequential order. So under our custom theme directory, which is, that's the name of my theme is custom theme. I know I'm so imaginative. We have archetypes, which we're not going to be covering in this video. I have a different video on that. We have our layout uh, folder, which we will be covering in this video and our static folder, which we are also not covering in this video. Um, we can pretty much ignore theme.toml. Um, you can fill in some of this information if you want. Um, but let's dive into our layout, layouts folder where we have partials and default. Partials represents um, partial HTML files. Um, <laughs> kind of self-explanatory name. So we'll start off with our header. If that sounds logical. We have our doc type here. It's, it's pretty much just the start of a basic HTML file. That is until we get to right here where it gets wonky and absolutely crazy. This is not HTML here. Actually, these double squiggle brackets tell Hugo, hey, I'm going to be writing uh, not HTML inside of here, but rather your Hugo templating language. So Obviously, this is not HTML. This is Hugo templating. So we have this with command that we're running. And it's kind of like an if statement. It evaluates this, which is a variable. It's a it's a it's a site wide variable, which is why we say site. I'll explain this in just a bit. So it evaluates this variable and says if this variable exists or if it has content, you know, if it's a truthy value, then evaluate what's between the with and the else. Otherwise, evaluate what's between the else and the end. Okay, so we have from with to end. That's our whole entire statement um, going on right here. So this dot site dot language code, this represents our site's language code, which we set in our config.toml file right here. Language code equals n dash us because I'm in the United States and I'm speaking English. So if that variable exists, which it does, it has content, then dot else render n-us, which would just be like a, a default value if you didn't set the language code. Now, what does this dot mean? Well, we have this same dot here, and it actually represents the current context that we're operating within. So if you just have your HTML file and you're just writing all of a sudden, okay, I'm going to start writing Hugo templating. The dot represents the root context, but the context can actually, uh, well, the dot representing the context can actually change depending on the context, which is why it's referred to as the context most of the time. So this with uh, command, it changes the context to be whatever this is. So with site.language code. Now, whatever's between the with and the else is going to be able to use the dot as site.language code. Okay, got it? Let's move on. In our title here, we have more of this convoluted stuff. Right here, we have dot title. Of course, this is referencing the root context right here because we're outside of this. So, 
this doesn't matter. This doesn't represent site.language code anymore. Right now we're back to our root. So this represents the title of the page. So this is going to change from page to page because we can include this header.html file in multiple different pages. So we have this the title of the page. And then I'm just going to render a dash and then our site's title. This is not going to change across the entire site, our site.title, which is something that we set right here. Okay, so if I change this, our site.title will also change. Okay, and now we have this .hugo.generator, which I'm just going to head over to my browser and open up view the source so we can see what actually is going on here. This is the index.html file. Um, and as you can see, we have n-us here. Uh, this is the name of the page, which since it's the index.html file, it also is the name of the site in this instance. But then this is the name of the site. And here is our .hugo.generator variable. It, it's a meta tag that pretty much just gives Hugo credit for building our site. Obviously, I could be dishonest and not include that, but I want to support the Hugo to developers. They do request that if you build a theme, you put that in there so that people know Hugo built this site and so Hugo can gain more popularity. And I would love for Hugo to gain more popularity. I think it's a great project. All right, so that's pretty much the end of our header.html file. Our footer.html file is really boring, just closes everything off and says this is the footer. Let's go into our index.html file. So of course we have to include our partial files, which we include with the partial command but then we pass in this context. If I passed in something that was not dot, all of these variables would be messed up. But we're just passing in the dot to be nice uh, to ourselves. And um, if I took all of this and just pasted it in here, it would work just fine because we're passing in the same context here. Now we have this range command, which is pretty similar to, say, a for each loop in JavaScript. So we have a range of dot site dot regular pages. So this is ref obviously it's it's referencing the re regular pages of the site. It's essentially an array. So we're for each element in this array, if you want to JavaScriptify the syntax here, um, we're looping through all of the regular pages, which are not, for example, like um, pages that list every single tag that you have in your website or that list every single post. You know, these are just regular pages. In this case, it's our test.md file and our welcome.md file, or just our posts. Um, then this changes the context so that our dot now references whatever page we're currently looping through. So we have dot permalink, of course, that references the permalink to that post. And then we have the title of the post reference there. And then we end our loop and include our footer.html file. So let's see what that looks like. We have our two posts, our test post and our welcome post. And we're echoing out our permalink here, permalink, title, title. Beautiful. All right. Now let's move out of our... Um, layouts and partials directory, and we've covered those, and into our default directory, which is where Hugo is going to look for um, a way to render a certain piece of data. So say it wants to render um, a list of all the tags on your site, or a list of all the posts on your site, or it just wants to render a single post. Well, that's what these three files here cover. They have to be named exactly this, single.html for single posts, lists, for say if you want to display all your posts and terms for taxonomies okay so we'll go through each of these in this order first our single.html file it's going to be uh, in the context of a single post so we can just put out the title and the content now of course there are a lot more things that you can read out of your single post but this is just an overview all of the variables are very well laid out in the Hugo documentation. I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's great documentation, you should really check it out. So we're displaying the title and the content of the post. Let's see what that looks like in action. So this is our index.html file. I wanna click on test post. Here we go, here's our header, here's our footer, here's our 
test post. Beautiful. And if we view the source of that, yep, there we go. Beautiful. Coming back over here, let's take a look at our list file. Of course, we include our header and our footer. Um, and the list file is going to display um, anything under like our posts folder. Okay, so if I come over here, delete this little portion of the URL here and go here, this um, post, what's rendering right now is this list file in the context of posts. Okay, so um, our permalink in this case is going to be, well, let's see what it looks like. It's dash posts or slash posts, sorry. Um, and then our title right here, our title is posts. Now we come over to our range, loop through all the pages, you know, we looks familiar now somewhat. Our context is now that of whatever page we're on. And I want you to notice that this line, line eight, and this line are exactly identical. And that, and we can do that, and it's really easy to read because we're changing the context in this range here. The lines can be the same, it's easy to read, and that is part of the power of using this Hugo template. Uh, it's just it, it's very easy to read if you if you can understand what's going on. It's it's not too difficult to understand, and I, I just think that's that's really cool. All right, last file that we're going through in this video is our terms.html file, which happens to be probably the most complex file in this project so far. Terms.html, um, that's going to be what's rendered whenever we go to not posts, but say tags or maybe categories. Okay, um, say categories. There we go. So this is displaying, of course, all our categories, or in this case, all our tags. We'll stick with the tags for now, uh, view the source of that, and head back over here to see what is going on. First, we're setting a variable, which I don't think we've done yet. We are setting a variable um, equal to dot site dot base URL. That is the base URL of our site, of course. Um, and then we'll display the title, which in this case happens to be tags, okay? And then we're setting another variable equal to uh, dot data dot plural, okay? Now, of course, this site is, or this site, this page, terms.html, is running under a different context than, say, list.html or single.html, okay? And it's the taxonomies context. I don't know the proper term for it. I'm sorry. Um, but we have access to this data variable. And that data variable contains all of the information we need to know about the set of taxonomies that we're working with in this page. So in this case, um, data is going to represent all of the data that has to do with our tags. So we have dot data dot terms that represents all of the terms under tags. In this case, all of those terms are one tag, two, two tag, and three tag. So now we are doing kind of a more complicated version of the range uh, command here, and we're getting a key variable and a value variable. And I don't use the value variable yet, but in this case, it will represent, I think, the number of posts that uh, use this tag. So, so if two posts use this tag, it'll it'll hold the value of two. If five, it'll be five. Okay, and key is the name of our tag. So there's a really interesting um, sort of problem with the dynamically changing context that we're running into right here. Um, I want to make a link to the base URL and then the plural of the um, taxonomy and then the key, which is exactly what's happening right here. But what I can't do 
is type dot site dot base URL because we're inside of a range. So this context now represents something else. Okay. So that's why I have to set base URL outside so then I can use it inside of this range and I have to set plural outside so I can use it inside of the range where it has a different context. And now I'm also um, grabbing the key here and popping that into a link. So let's see what that looks like. If I come over here and we get our URL that we generated and our tag or our key. So if we came over to categories, we would see something very similar. We have our link and there's the key. All right, everybody, there you go. That is a really simple introduction to templating with Hugo. Like I said um, before, the documentation is excellent and there's so much that you can do with Hugo templates. They're very, very powerful. We barely scratched the surface. This was just a basic introduction to get you comfortable with a little bit what's going on so you can like, oh my goodness, you know, figure out where you are. I hope you learned something from this tutorial. I had a lot of fun making it and I really enjoy working with Hugo and I hope that you do too. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Jacob. Don't forget to subscribe and have a good one.